Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about this morning, our sister Keisha Lance Bottoms. Now she's the former mayor of Atlanta. Now she was actually in the leading and she would have won her reelection very easily because people in Atlanta still liked her. And we was all shocked. Like, why did she drop out? Why she not didn't run for reelection? Well, the Democrat party had promised her a position, you know, in the party in itself. And as you could see, um, just on the screen, it says she's the, of course we know about the CNN thing. She's the DNC vice chair. Okay. So that is a position that they gave her. Now she would have done better just being the mayor of Atlanta than taking that DNC position but I guess she felt that, well, maybe one day I'll be able to move up the ranks in the Democrat party. But so Keisha here says, keep playing y'all. This election is not a joke. You know, every freaking election is always the same speech of this urgency. This is the most important election of our time. Oh my God. Dem democracy is on the ballot. Oh, you, you better get out there and vote because you don't want them other people in there. Oh, well, you know what's going to happen to you if they get in there. Y'all don't realize how much of that's a tactic that they use. To, let me tell you something. To gin up fear and urgency in people is a great tactic for people not to think. Because if they were the best viable candidate, then people say, you know what? They can look at their history. You can pull up their paperwork and you can say, okay. What have this particular person, and we talking about Raphael Warnock here, what has Raphael Warnock has done? And if you can, you don't have to think about it too much. You don't have to think about it at all. You can say, yeah, he done this, 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 and this, right? That's why I'm gonna go vote for him because this, because he showed up. But she say, y'all keep playing y'all. This election is not a joke. So if Reverend Warnock is replaced by a man, who claims to have found a cure for the virus is say, and it's the handpicked candidate of the previous president. We should all be afraid. Okay. Herschel Walker is the last person I will be afraid of. Just, just to be honest with y'all, I'm not afraid of Herschel Walker. <laughs> he, no, no. Herschel Walker, bless his heart. No, uh, uh, Herschel Walker can barely put together two sentences a lot of the times. And, and I, I'm not afraid of him. He said, no, he's not the one I'm afraid of. But, but see what's starting to happen here. And, and, and sister Keisha, you may see this. See, see sister Keisha, what's happening is symbolism politics is starting to fail. Symbolism politics have been what y'all been used of forever that y'all can just tell black people, this is the most important election ever. This election is not a joke. All oh, democracy is on the ballot. You could tell us that. And then you put a black face in there, right? And we get nothing. Now you may say, well, um, Herschel Walker, he's black. Sure. He is. He's definitely black. But the reason why, Herschel Walker is leading has nothing to do with Trump. Herschel Walker is leading is because black people are highly disgusted with the Democrat party right now. And when you, what's happening is, and what possibly when I'm thinking may happen is this black folks are going to do one or two things. I keep telling y'all because a lot of people, black folks are, are disgusted. They either going to sit it out or they're going to do a protest vote. Either way, the Democrats don't get the vote. You understand? The Democrats need black folk. And what I will tell black people, and I'm going to keep saying this, let the Democrat party eat cake. And the reason why they got to eat cake right now is because when they, two years, they had the opportunity to do for black folk and they didn't do a single solitary thing, but politics with you. Symbolism politics with you. Everybody else got a bag. Afghans are not even citizens of this country. The moment they got in here, they got a bag. The Democrats got companies like Airbnb to put them up in, in, in their houses. But you got American citizens on, underneath the bridge tonight. 
and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. You understand? The Democrats sit up here, send billions of dollars to Ukraine. The Democrats gave the Asian community federal protection. They are, they are a highly protected class over you that's been here almost 500 years. You suffered the worst of the worst in this country and you're not protected. Your so-called black representation, Clyburn, sit up here and, and cape for the $5 Indians to give them more land, but they never fight for you to get your land back. You know, like the brothers and sisters with Bruce's beach out of California. That's just one family of many. that had their land taken from them. One of many. There's so many black American families right now that should, that should be getting their land back. And that land in itself would be their wealth is the land. Why in the hell should black folk, be sitting up here supporting the Democrat party at this point. Y'all don't support us. See, see, if you sit up there and gave us what we needed as a community, if, if you done that, if you gave us what we needed, if you treated us with, with, with dignity and self-respect, if you made sure to take care of us first, if you took care of us first and then you done everything else for anybody else, we wouldn't have said nothing. Listen, black folks don't care if you help other groups of people. We're not like that. But you, but you made sure that your priorities and your policy was to skip over black folk and make sure you go help everybody else, even non-citizens. So what we say is skip over black folk, asking for us to come out and vote and go talk to everybody else that you, you helped everybody go talk to them all. This election is a joke because we ain't got no stake in it because y'all don't do nothing for us. And I'm pretty sure in the chat right now, I know there's some people from Georgia right now, especially a lot of black people in Atlanta, shout out to Atlanta. Y'all let me know Warnock did anything for y'all. I want to know. And now I know in the chat as well, you're going to have those that, you know, cause you have a certain mindset with a lot of black folks with the Democrat party. I mean, it's sad. You hear them call in, they really don't know the issues. They don't really don't know much, nothing. They don't know anything about what the candidates are doing, what they pushing, what they didn't push. You know, they can't talk about, you know, what have they done for black folk, but this election is not a joke. See Keisha, you Barack Obama. See, we know the game. See, cause you know, for some people, some people respect, you know, Obama, I guess. I, I mean, I don't have respect for Obama, the things that he's done and he didn't do for black people. That's why he messed off his own legacy. He had the opportunity to do what's right by black people. He had every opportunity. Barack Obama could have been the, one of the greatest black people, you know, in recent time, if he'd have done right by black people being the first president, black so-called black president, right? He chose not to. He messed up his legacy. Nobody else, because he was trying to please a group of people that would never approve of him. That's what I always tell y'all. You get a, you go and try to make sure that you're good with your community first. Don't try to please other people. Don't even try to please them other folks. Them other folks will never be pleased with you. You can try all of the, the, the white validation you want. They will never approve of you. No matter what you do, no matter how much you bend, no matter how much you cower, no matter how anything, they will never, 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 never approve of, of me and you. Cause they're threatened by me and you. That's why. But the Democrats as time go along, now we are looking at, uh, we're in the month of April. You have these midterms in the month of November. They're going to be ratcheting it up and speaking and going on and on and on and on and on. Now let's actually look at what's being actually said. Now they actually took this, you know, from the actual root. That's what they took that from. Now let, let's see what they say. They say the Georgia Senate race is slated to be one of the most competitive during the 2022 20, uh, midterm. 34 seats will be up for grabs across the country. So Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker, the one who claimed they said he, that he had a cure for the thing. It says narrowly winning an early poll against 
Raphael Warnock. They said the Hill Emerson College poll surveyed uh, 1,013 Georgia registered voters between April 1 through 3. It said Warnock won a tight race in a special election in 2021. It said it's seeking a full Senate term. It said 45% of registered voters in the Hill Emerson College poll released Wednesday support Warnock, while Walker is backed by 49% of the voters. It says 6% of the voters remain undecided. And the Republicans lead is just outside the survey's margin of error of three percentage points. Okay. So they said there's also news concerning a gubernatorial race that Democrats should watch. They say Stacey Abrams is currently trailing her Republican opponents in her second bid to become governor. It's according to another Emerson uh, Hill poll. It said Governor Brian Kemp leads Abrams by 51%. 44% margin and former Senator David Perdue is his Republican who is mounting a primary challenge against Kemp leads Abrams 49% to 44% of margin said much of the support of each candidate is divided across racial lines. They say they is divided. Now they said that the Republican candidates lead on the, on the strength of their performance among white voters. The poll found is that more than three quarters of white voters say they will support either Kemp or Purdue over Abrams. Now say the poll shows Abrams leading by substantial margins of about 40 points among black voters who make up a third of Georgia electorate, but her advantage among those voters is likely to grow as more than a third of black voters say they remain undecided. Now they said both democratic candidates are said to be hurt by Biden's current approval rating in the state. They said Biden's approval rating in Georgia is underwater with 42% of voters approving of the job he's doing and 49% disapproving. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't even know why Stacey Abrams are even trying to run right now. I mean, I wouldn't want to, if I would want to run on a Democrat ticket, let's say if I wanted to do that, I wouldn't do it right now. That would be a horrible time to do it. You start running when everybody's pissed off at the Republican party and looking for Democrats to get back in. That's when you jump back in, right? But you want to jump in now and try to run. I mean, that don't make any kind of sense. So basically they, they rejecting the States. Abrams. Okay. Okay. Some black folks support her, but I'm telling you, it says a lot of black folks are undecided. Black folks are not going to show up for Stacey Abrams. That is not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. Stacey Abrams not fighting for the black community at all either. All she has been is basically a, um, a mule for the Democrats. Oh, I'm going to get people registered to vote. And a lot of people you getting registered to vote going to vote uh, 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 the other side because they upset. And it's gonna be a, it's gonna be some tears. I'm telling you on that. I, I want to see that. It, they they it's gonna be some tears that night with the Democrat Party because they haven't done nothing for black people. And I know good and well they sitting down like shoot. I thought Katanji was gonna help us out. That's why we were like urging you to pick a black Supreme Court justice. I don't even know why they thought that. That's like so weird to me. Like I said. D Democrat party. Listen, cause I know you're going to listen to everything that I'm talking about. Cause it's your job. Symbolism, politics, no longer work for us. You want our vote? We need tangibles. We need policies. We need our reparations in a form of cash payments. Okay. That's what we need. A black face. It doesn't do anything. Y'all have proven that these black faces are only used to pacify black folk. But when you engage in other communities, you make sure to give them tangible policies, tangible uh, financial or wealth transfers. You're giving people who are not even citizens uh, money. And you about to, this situation is coming up on the border with this, they ending title 42. Have y'all heard about that? So title 42 it's the measure that was put in during the pandemic where they can quickly get people out of here underneath the public health measure. And it has kept a lot of people out of here, right? Well, Biden is planning on ending title 42, um, thing next month. And there are people that are Democrat and Republicans say, no, you need to kind of hold off on that, buddy. You know, I mean, no, but, but no, he, he wants to flood this country with people, 
you know, that's coming in for low skill work. Let's call it what it is. Most of them come. You know, that's not doctors that coming across that, that border. That's not scientists. You know what I'm saying? That's not neurosurgeons coming across that border. That's people that's looking for low skill work. Some of them, some of them are into uh, crime too. That's coming across that border. You understand? And he wants to open the floodgates and that's going to hurt him too. Let him open the floodgates. The black Americans are already watching all the things that's going on. And, and he going to sit up there and do that. And then what they also do in the middle of the night, they move these people in the middle of the night and drop them off in different cities. When, when people is, you know, in the bed sleep, they moving them and, and how, and, and spreading them all over the country. That's why, you know, here in Texas, Greg Abbott said, okay, uh, I got 900 charter buses that's going to grab these people and I'm going to bus them to Washington DC and we're going to drop them off at the Capitol and let Biden deal with them. Since he said he wants them over here, let him deal with them. And then now some of them say, Oh, well, you know, that's not right. That that's a bit much what he's trying to do and say, uh, well, why is it a bit much? Why? He's saying that, listen, we'll take them and put them in Washington DC where they can get all the help they need right there in DC. I mean, he, he want to open up the floodgates, right? I mean, we in the black community, not, you know, we don't want the floodgates open. Look at what's going on now. If the floodgates get open with no pushback, then what you think he going to do? Throw a lot of money at them. Oh, I got to house them. Oh, I got to give them food stamps. Oh, I got to give them welfare. But let black folks go ask some food stamps and welfare. Look how black folks are treated when, when black folks need some help. But he wants to open up the floodgates. Oh, he wants to let in a hundred thousand Ukrainians. He let, he wants the Ukrainians in here, but he wants the black folks in here. That that man, I'll make sure I put that out. Everybody else is welcome, but black folk. Black folks in mass numbers aren't welcome. Maybe a few black people can sprinkle in from from the Caribbean or from you know the continent of Africa. But it, but no, not not no mass numbers. No, he don't want a hundred thousand uh, uh, black folks coming in here at a time. No. He lose his mind. He want them Ukrainians coming in here. That's what he want. And he let them in here. They, they, they going to take more resources away from black Americans. So why in the hell should we go out here and, and, and keep that party in power? Why? We're not benefiting. We, we as black folks are saying no more symbolism, politics. What we want is, or uh, what you going to do for us? Period. We need protection. We need money. That's what we need. We need money. So I, well, everything about ain't about money. BS. Everything is about money. I guarantee you right now, but every last one of y'all will get a hundred thousand dollars. Don't tell me it wouldn't help you change some things in your life. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's about money. Everything is about money. Everything with them is about money. All they want to do is make a dollar here, make a dollar there. What are you talking about? It's not about money. Oh, we need to do this. No, 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 no. When you look at these other groups, they're getting money. Every time you look up money, 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 money. Black people are the only ones that's not getting anything. Well, you know what? If we're not going to get nothing, then you know what? Nobody getting nothing. How about that? Cause I know that, you know, the, the people will come, you know, cause we had that crowd in our community. Well, what are the Republicans going to give you? I don't really expect much from them. But at least the Republicans, nobody getting nothing. You see how that works? Nobody. And I'm good with that. I'm good with that. You may actually could possibly get something out of Republicans too. Possibly. Because also, you remember the last election that just passed? How they saw an uptick of black people voting more for Republicans? The Republicans have paid attention to that too. They say, wait a minute, black people starting to vote for us now. Yeah. Because the reason why it's starting to happen is because the Democrats are that bad with black people, but you still got black folks. Oh my God. The Republican look, I would never say I'm a Republican. Never could never be a Republican because I'm cool with them up until they get to that, you know, racism, white supremacy part of their party or you, everything they think about race and white supremacy. They're not going to protect black gun rights or anything else. We see that 
They always talk about the Second Amendment, Second Amendment, but quiet about the Philando Castillo case, quiet about the Amir Locke case, quiet, all the time quiet when it's time to speak up about the Second Amendment. They never come out talking about the Second Amendment when it comes to black folk. That's what I'm saying. I couldn't be a Republican whatsoever. I couldn't. And I'm not no Democrat either. But I also understand you got to play the game. You got to play both sides. And I'm definitely with playing both sides, no matter what side it is. I will never join your party, but I'll play the side, whatever is going to be good for my community, period. I don't care about, well, you got to think about everybody else. I don't care about everybody else because everybody else don't care about my community. That's point blank. Everybody care about their own communities and black people. We got to get on that. Forget all that caring about. We got to think about others. No, you don't. No, you don't. Others don't think about you. And they have shown that and proven that time and time again, they think about themselves and we're thinking about ourselves for a change. We think about our group. And what we're saying is if you're not going to give us nothing, then don't expect us to show up. And let me tell you something else. Every year that passed by Democrats, that symbolism generation, that just going to vote because just because they see a black face, you losing those voters every year because those voters are elderly. Every year you're losing that base. And now you got to deal with the younger people. And you don't want to deal with us, but you're going to have to. You're going to have to. So we're telling you right now, symbolism don't work. We need tangibles, period. And you know what? I hope Herschel Walker wins. I will laugh if Herschel Walker wins. I would laugh. I would be like, yes, Herschel Walker won. Good. I say, I may, I may tweet. I say, Keisha. I tried to tell you, Keisha. I tried to tell you, y'all, y'all don't want to listen to to me. Listen to your uncle. I'm telling you, Keisha, you know, symbolism, just not going to get it. But thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on the podcast. We greatly appreciate your time um, spending it here with us. Make sure to subscribe. That way, you know, when we post another video, make sure to click that like button. That's very, very important uh, to do so. And once again, we would appreciate you coming on by and see you next time.